Well, Bill, his mother and father never got closure, dying after their son Henry Northington was murdered. But 23 years later, his two sisters are still struggling to find out why. They say reopen the case is giving them hope. At times I think about it and I feel like he was here and he disappeared and nobody knew about him. Definitely one of the most brutal cases I think Richmond detectives have ever worked. The body was found about half a mile down river. Somebody had picked up a boulder and just smashed it down on him. He was killed first and then had his head cut off. And somebody carried it a mile all the way up by the railroad tracks up on the footbridge and placed it there. Clearly, I think um, some kind of message of some kind. One of the things in this case that stuck out to me is that Eddie's family did not know that he was living homeless in the Richmond area until he was murdered. Please, if you will, take the time to help us, to help Eddie, to let us have an answer, and to help solve this for him so he doesn't die in vain. Please. For three months of the year, from October 30th to December 31st, three of us were the same age. I said he, when he was in school, he, um, he was good to talk to. 23 years ago, that Eddie was murdered, and this bridge I'd never been to. Ooh, this gives me the willies a wee bit. Do you know where his body was? Tuesday morning, a pair of walkers hiking down this path found the head at the other end of this footbridge. I'm a little shocked because we normally don't find severed heads in this area. After an intensive search, Richmond police found the victim's body about three quarters of a mile down river. But the identity of the white man and the answers to other key questions remain unknown. The victim is Henry Edward Northington, and people that were close to him called him Eddie. Uh, Eddie went to school down there in the Colonial Heights area. When he graduated, he eventually left to be a sailor in the United States Navy. We had been trying to find him. No, we didn't know where he was for until we got a call. You know, how sad is it that his family really didn't know his living conditions until he had already passed away? It, it leads you to believe that maybe one of his family members would have opened their doors to him if he would have said, hey, I'm homeless, I need somewhere to stay. When this happened, it was assumed that, you know, family members in the community thought this was a hate crime because Eddie was gay. At one point, they had checked on something, on someone, um, and they had given me a couple names of people. They have gone even out of state to talk to people that were in prison, but, you know, I guess through the grapevine in prison, and some people claim they do things, and they, when they did the fact, talk to him, the facts didn't line up. Eddie was beat up. He was decapitated. His head was left on the bridge that I am sitting at, and people found it, and his body was carried through the woods to the river and left there. Um, we need somebody to please help us, and I ask, with all my heart, if someone, please, if you will, take the time to help us, to help Eddie, to let us have an answer, and to help solve this for him so he doesn't die in vain. Please. Henry Eddie Northington was a pretty tall guy, Bill. He's about six foot four. So we talked to a doctor tonight at 11 that explains what he thinks would have had to happen to get his uh, body, found his body parts in two different places. So what that would have taken someone to do at that time. Well, and you mentioned uh, the homeless camp. What about that? How, how does that factor in? Well, since Mark Holmberg did a piece in uh, 2015, that homeless camp has been dismantled. and. And obviously, uh, a cold case like it is, PD, my sources within the police department believe that someone in that camp may have known what happened to him. Since it's dismantled, right. th there goes the answers, maybe. It's really unsettling to think that somebody could do something so brutal and then yeah. still possibly be walking around. Yeah, that's the scary part about it. And his sisters desperately want answers because you heard me there. Mom and dad died after he right. passed away.